Welcome to the first video in a tutorial series intended to familiarize you with the basics of FreeCAD. This tutorial is going to be using FreeCAD 0.18.4. Past and future versions might look a little different than this, but the main concepts should remain the same. So without further ado, let's get started. In this video, we're just going to be covering how to make this simple part in the part workbench and going over some of the basics of using the software. So when you start FreeCAD, you'll be at this intro screen here and you're going to want to create a new document either by hitting this create new or going to file new or control N. Once you've created a new document here, you can go ahead and click this button here to add a cube solid and then you'll just have this square on your screen. You can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. If you click and hold the mouse wheel, you can pan around. And then using this up here, you can actually rotate the view. And clicking on any of these faces will allow you to uh, rotate it around to exactly one of the faces. And then under here, you can see we have two different versions of the projection but uh, that's not super important. And then up here, you can also just click these buttons to rotate your view around. So you have your isometric, your front, etc. And of course, you can hit the number keys labeled there to go to it. So if you go to isometric, it just looks like this. Now, if you want to rotate the camera around, you can pan with the middle mouse, like I said earlier. But if you are holding the middle mouse and then you also hold right click, you get a rotation like that. But generally speaking, you aren't going to be moving the camera around that much. So it's not a huge thing. But anyway, let's get on with the actual modeling. So we've got our cube here and the first thing we want to make is this main rectangular prism shaped portion of the part. So in order to do that, we want to select that cube we added. And under the length, width, and height, we want to enter 10 for our length, which it already is, and 6 for our width to make it a little flatter. And then for our height, we want 15. Now you're wondering how I ended up with these measurements originally and why are there no mouse controls for doing this stuff? Um, generally when you do something in CAD you want to have your design actually laid out on paper or something first so you can just go in here and enter your measurements and you know exactly what you need to do before you even start modeling in CAD. But anyway, so we've got our basic part here and for the next portion, we want to make this arc over the top. So if we go back to our document here, we want to have a cylinder position like this intersecting with this rectangular part. So go ahead and add a cylinder here. But you'll notice it's obviously not rotated correctly. It's too small and it's too long. So what can we do to fix this? We select our cylinder over here, or we can click on it. You'll see we have our placement, like the cube, and then we also have the specs for our cylinder. Now we already know that we want our cylinder to be a radius of 5 because we want it to have a diameter of 10. So we go ahead and set that to 5. And then our height is going to be this axis here, and we already know that's going to be 6. But it's still rotated incorrectly, and it's in the wrong position. So we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So we can go over here and angle, and if we hit 90, well, that's obviously not going to work, because as you can see, it doesn't. What's actually happening, though, is under this axis portion, you can see we have z at 1 and x and y at 0. Basically what this does is that you have a line pointing out of Z because it's just Z1, Y0, or it's 0, 0, 1, basically. 
So we just have a line pointing up and it's rotating the cylinder like that, which is obviously not going to have any visual difference. But if we change this to zero and we change our Y to one, you can see it rotates it around this axis. But we don't want that either, obviously. So we change that to zero and our X to one. There we go, because now we're rotating it this way. So now we just need to put it in place and we just go to our position here and we want to move it over five and then over six and then up 15 to put it with that point exactly back in here. So the origin point of that cylinder is right around here now. So we've got this, but you'll notice we have these strange artifacts right here. That's because these two planes, this circular face and this flat face here, are intersecting in exactly the same spot. And not to mention that, but inside this, we still have that face of the cylinder, and if we were to try and export this, it would not go well. So we want to combine these into one shape, and it's fairly easy. We just go over here in the menu, hold Control, select both of our parts, and then we want to union them together like that. And now they're one part combined. The faces are a little ugly, but that is just a side effect of using the part workbench. In the next video, we'll actually create this same part with part design. It's a little bit cleaner, but considerably more complicated. But anyway, now we just need to make this whole. Now, you might already see where we're going. We've got this cylinder here. We want to get another cylinder, put it through this, and use it to cut the hole in here using one of these other Boolean operations. We can easily do this by just clicking on this cylinder here, and then we can copy it. I just use Control-C, Control-V, and you see it puts another cylinder here inside of our uh, document. Now you can't see it, obviously, and you can right click it and go to toggle visibility or hit the space bar and then you'll see now we've got something here. Now I want it to be a little smaller so let's just take this radius and knock it down to four. We can see it changes like that and then we still have these faces intersecting and the boolean operations can sometimes encounter some trouble if they're like that so you want to extend it out the sides of this model. In order to do that, we can just increase this height by a couple millimeters, but you'll see that it's still not sticking out of that side. So we can just go to our Y and change that to seven. And now we can see it's sticking out of both sides. Now to actually cut the hole, what we want to do is we want to select this fusion first because it's the base object that we want to cut the hole into and then we hold control and then we select the object we actually want to use as our cookie cutter sort of and under here you'll see we have make a cut of two shapes and there we go we have our hole at this point we have the part that is exactly like the example now, if you wanted to 3D print this, it's pretty easy. Uh, there are some more in-depth ways to go about generating a mesh, but the easiest way is to just select your part there and go to export. And then under here, we can just export it as our test part. And it's gonna ask if I wanna overwrite, and I do. There we go. You could go load that STL into a slicer for 3D printing or import it into a another 3D modeling software, anything you want. So like I said, in the next video, we'll be going over making this exact same part, but with part design, which uses a different method of modeling. And it generally works a lot better 
for uh, doing this kind of work. And some final notes. Uh, now that you kind of just have the basics down, you should go through all this kind of stuff and see if you can figure it out. If you are curious about something, this is not going to be a comprehensive tutorial series. You should go look it up on the internet. The free CAD wiki is very good, and there are plenty of other tutorial videos on YouTube you can use for some of these specific features.